Today, I think it's a really exciting day in lots of, lots of uh, reasons. A, because it's Father's Day and I got presents. Yeah, it's really exciting. Ooh. And secondly, today, I don't know if this is the first time ever. Could be. But we are joint leading the service. There's two of us going to be leading today's service. So I don't know if that's a, a, a new thing. It might continue, it might be a one-off. Could be. But Johnny here, uh, we know Johnny, don't we, quite well, coming along to the church for how many years? Uh, too many. Too many. <laughs> 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 but it's great, great Johnny to have you up yeah. the front and leading us uh, in, our, in our service uh, today. So it is a Father's Day special, is that correct? It is indeed, it is indeed. Fantastic, that's all good. So a very warm welcome, isn't it, to everybody? Yeah, welcome everybody. For those, uh, the Zoom camera is up on there, so give a wave to those on Zoom. And the ones in the cheap seats. <laughs> and then we got uh, uh, YouTube on the camera over there. So hello to all Hello's you watching uh, this service later on, whenever that might be uploaded. Should we start with a Bible reading, Johnny? I think we should, Jonathan, yeah. Fantastic. Are you going to start or am I going to start? Shall I start? You start. So we're oh, going to yeah. read uh, Psalm 18, the first six verses. Yeah, so it's, uh, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangle me. The torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coiled around me and the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful little kind of verse? Yeah, it says a lot, doesn't it? I think, I think it does. I think it's great that it kind of, it encourages us to think about going to God, does it not? Yeah, no, exactly. That's obviously the ultimate father that you can approach any time, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's not just about going to God when things are good. Mm -hmm. It's going to God actually when it's, when the, I mean, what, what a line, when, when the cords so, of right? death yeah. entangle me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it's tough to do so, when, when it's hard to go to him, he's still able to go to, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So whatever's happening at the moment, remember mm -hmm. that you can go to God. And that last line, from his temple, he hears my voice, mm -hmm. my cry. And we can cry out to God, can't we? Yeah. Which, is, which is great. Um, we can cry before him into his ears, which is wonderful. So it's not just we're, we're praying or we're talking to, to his angels who pass his message on. We go straight into God's ear. Yeah, direct. That's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. Let it, he's let it be direct the whole time, hasn't he? So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Johnny, you've got another uh, reading for us, um, which we, our service is going to be kind of based around a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, obviously, the prodigal son uh, kind of goes without saying. It's a big Father's Day thing, isn't it? So. Absolutely. Get straight into reading the verse, shall we, John? Yeah, yeah you're going to read it? Great. Yes, yeah, so the prodigal of our son, obviously, uh, Luke... Uh, chapter 15, verse 11. <coughs> and, uh, and he said, there was a man who had his two sons. And the youngest of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had took and took the journey into a far country. And there he had squandered all his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country. And he began to be in need. So he went... And hired himself out one of the citizens of the country, who sent him into the uh, fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to the fed with the pigs, and the pigs ate. And no one gave him anything. But he came to himself and he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. And I will arise and go to my father, and he will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to the father. And while he was still a long way off, his father actually saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. 
And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before yourself. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this is my son. He was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. And he came and drew near to the house. And he heard music and dancing. And he called to one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come. Your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and, and, and entreated him. But he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you. And I have never disobeyed your command. And you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property and prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead, and he's now alive. He was lost, and now he's found. Wonderful. Thank you, Johnny, for reading that. It's real powerful, isn't it, to know... Uh, and get that straight from Jesus, that whatever happens, we can go back to God and we can have that uh, that relationship again, isn't it? Yeah. No and matter how he far. celebrates it if we do, because we can be embarrassed to come back if we do bad. But he's going to celebrate if we come back. And no matter if you've been there the whole time, he's going to give you the same love and same reward. That's so right. Just making sure when you see someone that come back, you celebrate when they come back as well. Totally, totally. Thank you for reading that. Johnny, can you pray for us for our service? Yeah, definitely. And then we'll hand over to your dad to lead us in some uh, some sung worship. Two cartilages, eh? Mm. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lord, um, thank you very much for this service this morning. Uh, thank you for people that are here. Uh, thank you for the day that is today and uh, what we're thankful for. Obviously, for you being the ultimate father and what you show through the imagery and what all these means in the world. And this morning, as uh, myself and John lead the service, um, obviously, Dad now leads worship for us, and Keith comes to bring the word, so you just bring your spirit upon the place, and uh, let it flow, and uh, the real word come out, and uh, just play all the blessings that we have. Thank you for this day, and thank you for the week coming forward, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Day in history, death has been and you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, like eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive, and oh, happy day! Happy day, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, meaning face to face, I am yours. Jesus, you are mine. And this joy, perfect peace, earthly pain finally we'll see. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. He's alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same Forever you change Oh, what a glorious day What a glorious way That you have saved me Oh, what a 
What a glorious name. What a glorious name. Hey. Oh, happy day. Happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day. Happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. Wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed, forever I am changed. Thank you, Lord. Changed. Spirit of God. Amen. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day, when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire. Lord, restore the joy I have had. Until all I see is you. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day. When I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. Lord, let me burn for you again. And let me return to you again God I'm running to your heart I'm running for your heart till I am a soul on fire Lord I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire God I'm running for your heart I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Come out of sadness wherever you be. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. 
Come by your mercy, O oh, sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So oh, lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the helpless and all who do stray. Come sit at table and taste His grace. There's mercy and weary. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. So lay down your burden, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, come as you are, fall in his arms, come as you are, come as you are, come as you are. Fall in his arms, come as you are. There's joy for the morning, O oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. Lay down your burden. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart. Come as you are. Just some great, great words that we were able to focus on then, just to kind of, uh, just to tell God exactly how we feel and, and what he means to us. That's great. Um, we're going to do a little bit about what our fathers yep. and and I'm going to say others at the moment. Yeah, mean to yeah. us now, Johnny. You've got uh, you got the goods over that side. I do indeed. Quite a few goods. <laughs> <laughs> they always notice the green bag in the front. <laughs> so, yeah. so I don't know about you, Johnny, but um, obviously yeah. your dad has had a real. Uh, I'm going to say positive, positive influence. This I mean, is it, tricky. I, I this say, is tricky. I will say I didn't learn how to put a capo on by him. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, I am, I'm sure that yeah. your dad has had a real positive influence on your life, as yeah. my dad had had on my life yeah. as well. But yeah, definitely. was it just your dad, uh, as a male, that has had 
that positive influence? Or can you think of other males, men, who have actually helped to shape you positively? Yeah, 100%. So, you know, Father's Day is great, isn't it? It's about, about fathers, first yeah. and foremost. However, you know, there's plenty of role models, people that hold you accountable, people that teach you, people that take you under your wing, other than your father. So, yeah, Dad was the first person that did that. But then there's people in my life, you know, Pete in the back in the service today. Absolutely. You know, Keith and other men in my life, you know, people I've worked with, managers, uh, people that in football teams, you know, music, whatever it is, that that's are taking right. something in you and uh, giving you that sort of fatherly touch. And I think that that's really important to recognise, really, is that days like this, you can recognise not just the fathers, the people that have helped you and guide you, especially people that are older and are more experienced. There's always something they can teach you, right? Absolutely. So recognising uh, them as well. Totally, totally. Yeah. So what we want to just, um, I guess, in our little, we've got a little gift to give to all the blokes yeah. uh, here. And also, for those on YouTube, if you're kind of panicking... Um, we want to, um, not everybody in the world watching this, but of part of the church, I'm sorry, kind of drawing a <laughs> line here a little bit. Um, <laughs> but all of you blokes that actually you have had great influence on many young people, many other people that have been part of this church. And we want to recognize that, don't we? With yeah, yeah, definitely. That's something so we thought about quite a lot, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've got Toblerone <laughs> to give uh, to, to you blokes. Now... Can you explain a little bit, Johnny, of the yeah. significance of why we've picked? A, a because yeah. it's chocolate. I mean, that's a yeah. given. Okay. <laughs> we want to give you chocolate. But why the Toblerone? Are we, are we under yeah. franchise or do we, do we get any profit from Toblerone at all by giving these away? No, definitely <laughs> no. not. I mean, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? But no. So Toblerone is obviously, you know, traditional Father's Day treat, uh, as we know. Absolutely. However, we thought quite a lot about this little shape here, didn't we? That's right. Anyone see the triangle on there? Well, so the triangle, we could th name it a few things. You could e easily go Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We could do that. Correct. Which obviously is quite important through the gospel message. But what we thought about was that there's a relationship with the Father and the Son. You know, as I've had with my father, I'm sure you have with yours and other people yeah. as well. Um, and there's that sort of accountable relationship there, right? That's right. There's back and forth, teaching. However, in our Christian walk, as Christians... We don't just have our father and son. We don't just have our mothers. We don't just have our family. There's always the, the top dog father, which is... Which is God. The father, God. Absolutely. So it's really important when you're bringing your children up or anyone that you're doing, that you've always got God in the back of your mind. And Absolutely. he's sort of the unseen guest. And we've got a thing in our house that says he's the unseen guest at every conversation. He is everything. Yeah. So you've got to think about that. But it's not just the fact that he's watching like 1984. <laughs> or the book, if anyone knows that. It's the fact that, you know, we want him to watch. We want him to be accountable. And we, we have a better relationship via father and son because of who God is. And my dad brought me up the way he did yeah, because of who he is. And like the prodigal son, coming back to my dad, I'm able to speak to my dad about, about anything just because he knows that he can go to God about anything. That's and right. So if he couldn't give me that, then he can't accept forgiveness from God, so it's just a really positive thing. So yeah, we thought about that in the triangle quite a lot, didn't we? Absolutely. I think it represents it quite well. Very much, very much. <laughs> and also, I guess, in, in that kind of the whole mentoring yeah. of others as well, that that yeah. kind of idea that you're not alone in this. Yeah. If if you are, if somebody comes to you for advice, wants some help, that actually involve God yeah. in that conversation, isn't Pray it? Pray so as well, right? That's the main thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So can you, so there's a little card that is going to go with your Toblerone. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. If you, uh, that's all right. If you just want to read that out, just so everybody kind of sees what that's, that's about as well, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So we've got it on here that we'll give out to everybody. It just says, to the support of man, and whenever you give advice, help, or support to anyone, remember the Toblerone points. You, the person, and God. Now, together, you can go forward. Bless and be blessed from Forest New Life Church. Absolutely. So we're going to give those out at the end. So you've yep. got to, um, I was going to say endure, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy Keith's sermon. It's quite now, right if anyone wants seconds as well. Keith, you are <laughs> up. <laughs> and Johnny, Johnny prayed for you earlier, so we weren't gonna, we're not going to pray for you again. We, want, <laughs> we don't want you to have too much of God's blessing. Uh, we want to keep you, keep you humble. Yeah. <laughs> but as you see come up... See if he finds a way to use the triangle. Actually, the maybe we should. At <laughs> the preparation. <laughs> Father God, we, we do want you to really, really bless Keith this morning. And that you will uh, bless us 
through your word through him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, Father's Day. Um, Father's Day, I'm, I'm sure for many of us, brings mixed feelings. Um, you know, I had a, I had a great father. Um, he's now no longer with us. He went to, to glory on the 4th of July, so we won't forget that, will we? Um, ever. <laughs> uh, a few years ago. Three years ago now? Must be three years ago. But um, so, uh, you know, this morning, I just want us to think about that story that we shared. Now, I'm going to do something quite radical here. I'm actually going to change what I've written in my sermon. No, it's, be- it's better than that. No, yeah, it's better than that. No, it's all right. Uh, the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to read, read a little bit different um, part of the passage. And I haven't got it in my notes. So um, I'm going to do something different. So I just want to read the first few verses from Luke chapter 15. From Luke chapter 15. And um, yeah, so... Because it's important, I think, from that whole passage. So we read from verse 11. um, But I've got to keep getting the thing come up on my duper. Um, So let's just read from verse 1. The parable of the lost sheep. Okay, so not the parable of of the lost son. This is parable of the lost sheep. But it's important because we understand some of the context that Jesus was speaking. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, this, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me. For I found my sheep that was lost. I say to you, like that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need, who need no repentance. The parable of the lost coin. Or what woman, having lost, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, uh, sweep the house and search carefully until she founds it, finds it, And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then Jesus goes into the parable of the prodigal son. So in this passage, there's three parables. Parable of the lost coin, parable of the lost sheep, and parable of the lost son, or the prodigal son which was read to us earlier. I don't think I need to read it again. Um, So I think it's important that we just really understand the context that Jesus is talking about. And he's telling us this parable to show us a number of things. Firstly, we all got to remember in context that this is a, a patriarchal society. So obviously the men come first, uh, don't we men? Hello? Am I on my own here? Am I the only one who's going to stand up and be counted? There's two of us. <laughs> no, of course, of course we don't come first. Um, but uh, in that society, it was a patriarchal society. There were very defined roles. Men did certain things. Women did certain things and so on. Um, You see, he spoke on the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. And notice, he talks about the men when it comes to the parable of the lost sheep because traditionally they would have been the farmers and and all that, and the the shepherds, etc. And the lost coin towards the ladies because they were the ones that kept house. But what he was trying to do was be inclusive, all right? So let's just be real about Jesus. He was inclusive, okay? Everybody was in Jesus's gang, all right? There wasn't any, you know, betters or worses, or, but we were in a different society. We were in a patriarchal society, hence the story of the father and the two sons. And notice in that first two, <clears throat> in the first two parables, right at the beginning, he says there were Pharisees there and scribes there. 
But then he says, importantly, he says, tax collectors, they've got to go, boo. No, no, they're worse than that. Boo. And sinners. So tax collectors are obviously the worst of all sinners, the lowest of the low. Um, and uh, I think that's still true in our society today. Uh, tax collectors, um, although I'm not advising you not to pay your tax at all. Okay, please pay your tax. It's really important. But tax collectors, the worst of the worst. You see, to me, and, and really, this is a real revelation to me, okay? And you might not see this, but, or you might not agree with me. But I believe that Jesus, when he talked about the two sons, was potentially talking about those two types of peoples. Yeah? The, the oldest son perhaps was the Pharisees and the scribes. The one that was with the father all the time, the one that was part of the establishment, the one which was well respected. And yet the tax connector and sinners, perhaps they related to the youngest son or the, and uh, uh, the one that was lost and was prodigal or what, however you want to phrase him. So, so I believe that Jesus was talking to the two types of people that were there, the scribes and the, uh, the, scribes and the Pharisees, perhaps the, the eldest son, and the tax collector and sinners, the younger son. But the theme through those three parables, the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son, is lostness. Uh, is that a real word? Is lostness a real word? No, it's not. Okay. A, a, a degree of being lost. Okay, is that better? Teacher? Thank you. Okay. So, well, I still like lostness, so I'm going to use it. Uh, so, <laughs> it's lostness. I, 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 thank you. So, <laughs> I, I still think, I, I wanna, I wanna say, the theme that I see through this three is the lostness of us and God's wanting to find us or find us. So, lostness and findness. I made up two words. The lost coin, searching high and low to try and find that coin. You ever lost anything? Yeah? Um, my daughters, particularly Lizzie, when we lost something, we would have a look, okay? And then when Claire came home, they would have a proper look. <laughs> and Lizzie would say, uh, uh, this, Lizzie said this to Claire on one occasion, Mum, we can't find this video We've just had a man look. That's what she actually said to Claire. We just had a man look. So there we are. So if ever I write a book on parenting or anything, it's going to be called Having a Man Look. Uh, so there we are. So looking high and low until you find what you've lost. And the, the lost sheep, the rescue of that sheep. The, the shepherd, farmer, would not rest until he found that sheep that was lost, would, hunting high and low. Until it was found, until he brought it back. And then the lost son, until he came to his senses, until he realized the error of his ways. So in this parable, the parable of the prodigal son, we have three men, all right? Um, the prodigal, the older son, and the father. And these are types of people. Jesus was using types of people here. He wasn't actually just saying it's all about blokes. Okay, ladies, he was talking about types of people. Um, and maybe we can identify with each of these at different stages in our lives. I certainly can. So I wonder whether you can. So let's just think about each of these three different people this morning. Firstly, the older son. He was hardworking. He was dependable. He had a feeling of responsibility. He was going to be the man that took on the leadership of the farm. He was going to be the one who was in charge. He was the one who was the heir to the father's, uh, whatever he had, all his... All his um, houses and all of his fields. Now, he was the heir. He was the one. He had that sense of responsibility. But, you know, he was the first in line going to take over the family business. 
He was, you know, I, I don't know about you, but certainly as a parent, it's our first child that we make the mistakes on. You know, you want to get it right. You want to do everything. Well, when you get to number four or five, like Johnny, then, yeah, w- whatever, anything goes. Um, but uh, with the first one, you want to get it right. You want to do everything right. You want to do it, you know, provide the best. You want to, you're there, tending or whatever. But you make your most mistakes on your first child. I am the oldest in my family and obviously the bestest. Um, you're supposed to agree with me. Yeah? Say amen, brother. I am the bestest. No, okay. So I'm the oldest out of three. I've got a younger sister, boo, and I've got a, a younger brother. He's all right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I know how this older brother felt in the story. You know, not that I was going to take over the family business uh, because it wasn't a family business, but there was that expectation upon me as the eldest son to succeed, to do well. There was that pressure. You know, the the parents made all their mistakes on me. Uh, Oh, everybody go, ah. No, it was worse than that. But growing up, you are the first. You're the first to go to school. You're the first to go to university. Or you're the first to do whatever you do. Crash your car or or whatever it is. You're the first to do these things. And so first to take exams. and, And then that's the benchmark. Not that it's a competition, but of course it's a competition. <laughs> okay? Uh, even in our house with Emily and Lizzie, there's Emily's shrine where we have all of her awards, and Lizzie has a couple, but guess what? Lizzie did better uh, academically than Emily did. So there we are. So although it's not a, no, it's not a, hard, a hard-fought competition, of course there is. You know, I wanted to do better than my sister, but she did better than me. That's no good, is it? There we are. Feeling of resentment. I can imagine this older brother feeling resentment towards his younger brother. I certainly did growing up. Feeling resentment to my younger Why was Paul allowed to do that? I was never allowed to do that at his age. And so on. And I can imagine this feeling of resentment. He can't be carefree. He can't live life to the full. He can't just do what he wants because he's got that added responsibility upon him. You know, he's got a job to do and he's going to take on the family business and so on. You know, my fav- one of my favourite films, but probably my most favourite film, is It's a Wonderful Life. Everybody seen It's a Wonderful Life? Great film. If you've never seen it, you must. And if you've only seen it once, you've got to see it again. It's an amazing film. But in that, George, who was the who was, um, what's his name? Uh, That's it, Jimmy Stewart. He was the one who wanted to go and spread his wings. He wanted to go and see the world. He wanted all these things. But he ended up taking on the family business, the the building and loan company. He was the one who stayed behind. His brother went off and all the... He was the one who wanted to do it, but he never had the opportunity. Never had the opportunity. You know, he couldn't travel, he couldn't leave, and, and we know the story, I mean it is a made up story obviously, but it does illustrate some amazing things, that your life has an impact on other people. So don't ever belittle what you do, because your life has an impact. But this older brother, he was tied to the farm. Like it or lump it, he was tied to the farm, he couldn't go off and do. And he certainly didn't feel privileged in that. You know, just because you have that doesn't make you feel privileged. He probably was privileged, but he didn't feel like it. So let's think about the prodigals. That was the eldest brother. Let's think about the younger brother. Oh, I am so bored. I am bored. This is boring. I'm living a boring life in this boring place called the Forest of Dean. It is so boring. I am bored. And my boredom is boring. And I just want to get out and see life and travel the world. And, you know, yeah? Always in the shadow of his elder brother. Oh, Keith did this. Keith did this. I just made that name up because that's my name, Keith. But uh, 
<laughs> Gary. Let's call him Gary, shall we? <laughs> Fred. Oh, Gary's so wonderful. Oh, yeah. What do you flipping do? Yeah? You can just imagine him in his brother's shadow. Sees his brother as privileged. He's the one who's taking on the farm. He's the one who gets all the plaudits. I'll get a bit, but he's going to get everything. But he gets away with stuff that his older brother couldn't and didn't. Just like my brother Paul got away with. Not that I've ever held it against him, because I haven't really, but it, it was, it's there. It's there. Um, and uh, I've repented of it as well. First, just want to get that out there. <laughs> he had no ties. He could have fun. He could go and explore the world. He didn't have to do it. But the thing is, the grass is always greener. Uh, that's the phrase, isn't it? The grass is always greener. On the other side, the grass is always greener. You look over there and think, oh, look how amazing that is. And, and I'm sure in each of our lives we've done that, thinking how amazing the, the, it would be. I certainly remember going off as, a, as an 18-year-old, first time I left home as a student. I had money in my pocket. I never had that amount of money. It was called a grant. Those of you who are studying... Okay, a grant was something that the government gave you as a free thing to study, okay? And it wasn't just for your tuition fees, it was for you to live on. It was real money in the olden days. And uh, money in my pocket, away from my mum and dad, my mum was very quite strict, and wow, yeah, let's party, whoa, fantastic. Let's get it on. Live the student life. So, the prodigal gets his wish. He goes to his dad and says, Dad, I am so bored of living here. I need to go and find the world and what's going on in it. Dad, give me my inheritance so I can go off and, and, and live life. He gets his inheritance. He goes off. You know, Dad, I want my inheritance. I've done that. I did that to my dad a number of years ago. You know, when you're a 25, 30, 35, 40 year old struggling to make ends meet and you're working hard and that's when you need your inheritance, isn't it? Yeah? Anyway. Bright lights, big city. Yeah? Bright lights, big city. So-called friends. I got the money, I got the friends. Yeah, let's party, come and join me. Uh, there, are, there are friends who only want to be friends when they get benefits from you. I don't think I can remember having a friend like that because probably I've not had enough to benefit anybody else <laughs> ever. But there are friends like that. Good times end and they disappeared and he falls and he's got no money left. What's he going to do? Gets a job. Needs to get a job. And the only job that Jesus talks about is the one which really sends an amazing message, particularly to the Pharisees, particularly to the Pharisees and the scribes, particularly because they are the ones who uphold the law and they know. And Jesus says he's feeding the swine. He's feeding the pigs and he's so hungry he was even going to eat some of it himself. Yeah, the message shows how low he had got. From up here, plenty of money, plenty of friends, rock and roll, and then right down to the lowest of the low. What's he going to do? What is he going to do when he hits rock bottom? So, that's the, the oldest son, the prodigal son, now the father. Yeah, pretty proud of his two sons. We don't know if he had any daughters because they're not mentioned. But Jesus deliberately doesn't mention. He's just talking about the sons because predominantly the crowd that he's talking to are blokes. Scribes, Pharisees, tax collectors, sinners. Um, but that doesn't, he's not excluding them. He's just, it's just the context that he's in. But, he, but what this shows us of the father is that he loves his sons equally. Each one, he tries to treat them the same, but obviously he has to focus on the differences because there are differences. The difference is the fact the eldest is going to take the job on and so on. And I'm sure he makes lots of mistakes. Just like as parents, we make lots of mistakes. Every parent, put your hand up. Make mistakes. 
you know, one of the things I'm going to say to God, as long with why doesn't lettuce taste like chocolate and why don't people have a zip instead of... But um, the third thing I would say is why can't we have a manual with each one of these children? Why can't we have a manual? What are they going to be like? Emily and Lizzie were radically different, and yet, equally, they came out fine, thanks to their mother. Uh, he's heartbroken over his youngest son. Heartbroken that his youngest son decides, I don't want to stay around you no more. I've had enough of living here. I'm off. I want to spend my inheritance, and I want to rock and roll. And, I mean, in today's society, that's not so acute. Yeah? I mean, our kids have gone. I'm sure many of our kids have moved on and gone into other things and stuff, but you've still got that parental link and you want to make sure, and some people's parental link is stronger than others, but it's really important to keep that. We know that they've got to make their own mistakes, but you need to be there to pick them up and to help them. I mean, there's lots of biblical principles on parenting, but I think we do need something more specific, God. Okay, we need something more specific with each one. Um, you know, parents... Wanting to con continue to keep that relationship. Um, I don't know about you, but have you ever seen any of those programs where the parents are able to see what their children, their grown-up children, 18, 19, 20, are doing on like a holiday in Benidorm or something like that? I don't think I'd ever wanted to have seen that. Even though my girls are pretty good, I don't think I'd ever wanted to see that. I certainly wouldn't want my parents to see what I got up to. I mean, we didn't have cameras in those days and videos and interweb and all that. But I certainly wouldn't want to know. I mean, if, I haven't told him everything I've got up to. So, fortunately. But you want to keep that relationship as a parent. Parenting is hard. So many challenges, but so many joys that outweigh it. I mean, some parents go through horrendous heartbreaks. But oh, the joy when they come back. Oh, the joy when it's restored. So, what is Jesus saying to us through this parable? We've talked about the three main characters, the father, the youngest son, and the eldest son. What is Jesus trying to say through this parable? Well, to the oldest son, he's saying, you know, you can be just as lost without leaving. Hello? You can be just as lost without leaving. You don't have to go off and do stuff. It's what's going on on the inside that's important. Despite his situation, despite the fact that he wasn't able to leave, he was just as lost. He also says, don't despise what you've got. The blessings that you have of being with me, the blessings that we have of being with Father. Praise God for it. And your Father is there for you all the time, all the time, all the time. For us, our Father is here for us. I mean, he's not here for us, for us, but he's here for us, if you know what I'm trying to say. Hello? Are you still out there? If you're out there, say hi. Great, okay. To the prodigal, he's saying, there is a second chance. God doesn't give up on you. Whatever the situation, God does not give up on you. There is a second chance. He's on the lookout. You know, the story is, as he comes to his father, his father comes running to him. He's on the lookout. Looking for his son. God is on the lookout for you. And God forgives. When he comes running to his father, he says to him, Father, you know, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And his father said, don't be so soft. Puts a ring on his finger, cloak, party. Job's a good one. To fathers and to parents generally, even though it's really painful, don't give up on your kids. Even though it's a challenge. Just remember, just remember the crowd. Just remember that the crowd around them isn't always going to be good and that you need to be there for them when it all falls down. Pharisees and Sadducees, well, that's possibly the older son. The crowd that were there when Jesus was speaking, the older son, the Pharisees, the establishment, etc. Tax collectors and sinners. Well, probably the prodigal son. He's speaking to the prodigal son, speaking to the tax collector and saying, say, there is hope. There is hope for you, even though you feel like you're an outcast in society. Jesus also tells a parable 
of a Pharisee and a sinner praying. Do you remember the, Pharisee, the, the, the parable he says? And the two of them in, in church and the Pharisee's going, oh, look at me, I'm not like this other fella. I tithe three times a week and I'm amazing and I don't do this and I don't do that. And then the sinner goes, have mercy on me, I am a sinner. Who, which one was justified? Which one went home happy? It was the sinner, not the Pharisee. So Jesus was really focused on heart relationship. Whether we go or stay, God loves us. Hello? But we're all prodigals and need to come back to Father God. And that's possible because of Jesus. He's the one who told the story. So in conclusion, in conclusion, Jesus was mainly talking to men, but that was just because of the crowd that he had. And it doesn't matter, and it can apply to each one of us. We can identify with anyone in the story at different times in our lives, whether it's the father, the prodigal, or the older son. And whoever we are, we need to come back to God. He's waiting with outstretched arms, running towards us with forgiveness as we come back to him. You know, I remember my day. I remember the day when I first became a Christian. When I came running to Jesus, when I first wanted him to be my saviour. You know, those times of being a parent, those times of being a prodigal, those times of being an eldest son. I can identify, but God is the one that we need to come running to. And he will come running to us, just like the father in the story. Amen. Thank you, Keith. God is on the lookout for us. I think there was a lot in that sermon, Johnny, was there not? Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to that. I know I can. Yeah, yeah, huge amount. The God, yeah, God is on lookout. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Maisie has been busy at the back. <laughs> she has been, um, probably not going to see that on the, on the camera at all, uh, but she's been making some bird feeders. Uh, and this is a bird feeder she has made for me that she's threaded on that I can put on a, a tree um, a, a, around my house, not just any random tree to put it on. Um, and she has also been making, not just for me, but making one for each of you guys here as well. And as she's been doing that, um, they've been talking about that person that they've been doing it for of... Uh, just remind me, Helen, it's just something special, isn't it? Thankful. Yeah, so why she's thankful for having you as part of her family in, in church uh, today. Um, so she's going to give those out after, and um, maybe if she's not too shy, explain to you why you are important and why you're needed in to be part of her family family so that's that's really great um we're going to um sing i think we're we're pushing towards i think the end of our time together yeah uh, sorry Pete. yeah uh, do come up um so we're going to sing uh, a song just to finish our service and then we'll close to pr uh, pray to close yeah God so loved that he gave his son to lay down his life for the sake of us. He bore the way of our sin and shame. He said, it is finished. Christ the Lord overcame the darkness. He's alive. Death has been defeated, for he made us a way by which we have been saved. He's the Savior of the world, so we lift up a shout for his fame and renown. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Jesus, Savior of the world. We 
must spread the word of his soon return to reclaim the world for his glory let the church now sing of this coming king crowned with majesty our redeemer thanks the lord darkness he's alive death has been defeated and he reigns ruler of the heavens and his name is jesus the messiah for he made us a way by which we have been saved he's the savior of the world so we lift up a shout for his fame and renown praise the lord Praise the Lord Jesus, Savior of the world. Christ the Lord overcame the darkness. He's alive. Death has been defeated. And he reigns, ruler of the heavens. And his name is Jesus the Messiah for he made us a way by which we have been saved he's the Savior of the world so we lift up a shout for his fame and renown praise the Lord praise the Lord Jesus Savior of the important to point out as well isn't it up through the prodigal son story what keeps me through that song as well <coughs> is that we're all like Keith said we're all sort of linked to that story any time in our lives and as father in heaven he didn't have to make a way didn't That's have right. to get on the cross didn't have to take that death but the great news is he did yeah he chose to didn't and, he and uh, he has made a way and it means that anyone be them already come back or be needing to come back, just know there's no shame and, and there's always going to be an acceptance and no matter what there is, Absolutely. come back and he will forgive you. Just repent and be saved. Yeah, absolutely. Thank That's you, Johnny. Thing. It's a great reminder, isn't it? No matter what we've done, we can come back. And as Keith said, God is looking out mm -hmm. for, for us to turn around for our return. Let's pray to close, shall we, Johnny? Yeah. Father God, I just want to uh, thank you for this time that we've had. I want to thank you for all the males that have had such a positive, strong influence in my life. And as we reflect upon that, that have had positive uh, influences on our lives. And Father, we just want to say thank you for uh, the blessing that they have been to us. And Lord, if they're still... Uh, with us, that you will really bless them, we pray. Father, may we take that, uh, that, I guess, challenge, I guess, to a degree, really, really strongly, that if, if we are going to be um, looking and, and mentoring and people are going to come to us for advice, that we might involve you in, in advice that we give, in mentoring that we do. And for us all, Lord, that message that, God, you are looking out for us. No matter if, if we're, we've never made a commitment to God, whether we have a long time ago, whether we, we feel we're, we're, we're on it with God or we feel we're distanced from God, may you remind each one of us that you are 100% for us as that psalm said that any time we can cry to you you hear us we can speak straight into your ear and we thank you for that privilege please bless us in all that we we've got going on this next week father may may we walk with you may you walk with us we ask and pray in jesus name 
Amen. Amen. Thank you.